All right, guys, what are we doing today? We're going to pick up our Great Pyrenees puppy, May. That's right, let's go. What do you think? Oh. That's good girls. Do you like her? All right, it's actually a couple days later now. We picked up May on Monday and it's now Thursday. So we've had her here at our house for about four days now and we're getting her just kind of uh, socialized with the other animals. She's actually staying inside right now because she is so small. She's only six weeks old. Uh, she will be an outdoor dog long term, but for now she's staying inside with us. But we are taking her out to socialize her with our chickens, the goats, and our pig and also our other adult Great Pyrenees. So let's take her in there right now to give her a little bit more time with them. Hey Mabel, hey Meredith. You wanna spend some time with May? Now, as you can see, our adult Great Pyrenees are amazing with the new puppy, with May. May's out here with them and they're just chilling. They're all just chilling together. This is Mabel right here. Uh, she's about two years old and um, she had our last litter of puppies. That's Meredith right up here and she's one year old and um, yeah, they just welcome the new puppy in with no issues at all. They they play a little bit, but they're super gentle with her. Now you likely notice that May is a little bit different than the rest of our Great Pyrenees puppies. She has what they call 
badger markings. She doesn't like being held that long, but she has, she has badger markings. So instead of being all just pure white, she has these darker spots, namely, you know, on her ears, uh, on her head, and she also has a couple on her backside as well. Now the badger markings are still a part of the breed standard. She still is a full bred Great Pyrenees. Uh, and we got her for a few reasons. You know, we're breeding these Great Pyrenees, but we want to be responsibly doing that. So we don't want to wear any of our females out. We currently had two females that we were breeding. So this will be our third. And then that way, um, we're not going to breed any of them back to back for sure. In fact, uh, Mabel, who just gave us our most recent litter, we're going to give her at least a year off. And so we've got it cross fence here. So when she's in heat, in fact, she's in heat right now, we've got her quarantined away from our male from Mac. That way uh, she doesn't get exposed to him and she can have a nice break so she's not pregnant all the time. And May will be another one of our breeding females and she's gonna bring into um, our small farm these badger spots as well. So we're excited about that. Now we wanted to give you an update on our chicks as well, our baby chicks. The last video that we made, we had just gotten these baby chicks and uh, they've gotten a lot bigger since then. So um, that we've got them in this extended run off of our smaller chicken coop here. They're not with our bigger hens just yet because the bigger hens are a lot bigger than, than them still and they would honestly just peck them to death. Uh, but they're growing pretty quick and we have some really interesting breeds too. Uh, my daughter Melissa here has one of them. This one is called a blue cochin and as you can see here hold it up a little bit closer They have feathered legs and feet. So it looks like they're wearing little pairs of pants when they're walking around. It's pretty cool Let's go give May some time with the goats. Okay. Hey Mac. Hey Meredith. Hey Millie. Millie, you're so dirty from all that rain and mud. You can tell we like M names for all of our outdoor animals. The goats don't really seem too interested in May. They don't really seem to care. No. She's just running around living her best life right now. Finding a cool place in the shade to chill out and lay down. Hey Matilda and Moe's. Hey, what you guys doing? What you guys doing? <laughs> Let's go check out Memphis. See how he's doing. Chilling in the shade. What's up, dude? <laughs> Matilda's growing a beard. You're growing a beard, girl. Go tea. All right, it's just about feeding time. Are you curious how much food it takes to feed five Great Pyrenees, five Nigerian dwarf goats? and one mini pig. We're about to show you. Let's go get the food ready. Okay, let's go. She's a big girl. 
This is Reese Whiskerspoon. She's our barn cat. She hangs out in the garage and keeps all the mice and varmints away. She's a good girl. I'm gonna explain to you how we um, scoop and get the food ready for the animals. So for the dogs, we do two cups of dry dog food. In each of their food troughs. May's already trying to eat. <laughs> we gotta go get more eggs from the chicken coop. Right, let's go do that. Yeah. Come on, All right, we gotta go get eggs from the chicken coop because we ran out of them in the fridge. And one of our viewers actually asked in the comments on one of our previous videos, they saw how we use uh, the raw eggs in the dog food and asked why we do that. So we do that in order to just kind of supplement and make sure that uh, our dogs are getting plenty of protein and uh, the just nutrition, but also honestly just to keep um, their kibble, I don't know, interesting for them yeah. you know if we're if we're just feeding them the same dog food all the time they kind of get bored with it so what we do is in the morning they don't get the egg with it but at night time feeding at the the evening feeding they do so um, and also another reason why we do it is we have a bunch of chickens so we have a lot of eggs and we don't use them all for ourselves so Melissa is going into the chicken coop right now to look for some fresh ones we always have some inside as well um, but we probably right now from how many large hens do we have right now? 12. We have 12 bit like laying hens right now. So how many eggs are you getting from just today? Seven. We got seven today. That's not terrible. Some of our hens are a little bit older and they're not some honestly a couple of them may not even be laying at all. I don't have a camera in there so I don't really have a great way of knowing which ones are laying and which ones aren't. But as they get older they're not gonna lay one egg a day anymore. Sometimes they'll lay just maybe one every other day or maybe just one a week or maybe they just stop all together. And at that point, they become chicken soup. Isn't that right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we haven't done that yet. Maybe sometime soon. <laughs> Here's some of our older egg layers. And one of the awesome things about keeping chickens on the farm is especially letting them free range like they do they literally just walk around all day scratching the ground and eating bugs and just even like scorpions and small snakes and they eat the bugs and turn the bugs into eggs for us mm -hmm. it's kind of gross but it's true they waited here patiently for us to come back with the eggs to continue making the food i don't know what other six week old puppy would have that chill of a temperament to just wait for us to come back. This, it's kind of cool. Yeah. Alright, so we got the eggs. And then we we have, got their kibble. What do we do next? Um, we're gonna put one egg in each trough. But I need to go grab a glove to stir it. These eggs are warm. <laughs> Some of them were probably just a egg not that long ago. And it never fails. Uh, chickens like to eat the dog kibble as well, so they like to come to the door as we're preparing the dog's food. And we have to just kind of shoo them away. Okay, so that's how we do. All right, we got the dog food prepared. What's next? We're gonna do the goat food. Now we got the goat food. Gonna put these eggs back in the fridge here. All right, what do the goats eat? The goats eat um, just some pebble food. Some of the like goat pellets. Yep. So they get 
about half a scoop. <laughs> so curious. Just enough to kind of cover the bottom of it. Yeah. I'll put more in that one. Kind of similar to the goats. He gets two small scoops of this. What else does Memphis get? He gets one egg, and then some carrots and celery. And he gets some celery. You just snap it in half. Toss it in there. And he gets some carrots. And a few carrots here. Snap those in half. And that's it? Yep. All right, let's take it down to them. The goats always yell at us <laughs> when they're hungry. Goats, goats, goats. The garden's doing amazing this year. We'll show you that in just a couple minutes after we're done feeding the animals. Put the stuff in the compost. Yeah. So we got the eggshells, dump them down into the compost bin. Some fresh lawn clippings there. All right, let's open up the gate. Make sure the electric fence is off. That's always key. Unless you want to get zapped. Probably don't want to get zapped. Let's go feed Memphis the pig. Back up, folks. Whoa, back up. Back up. Back up. You ready to eat, dude? You ready to eat, Memphis? Let's go eat. Let's go eat. Let me close this sit. The goats don't come in. Nope, nope, nope. Sorry, sorry goats. This is just for Memphis. All right, Memphis, you hungry, dude? Are you hungry? Come here. Time to pig out. All right, you got the goat feed? Show us how you do it. It's like a goat mosh pit at first. All right, they just kind of like, it's like the, oh, what's in this trough? Oh, what's in this one? Oh, they're all the same, guys. They're all exactly the same. And there's enough for everybody. All right, time to feed the big dogs. There you go, good girl, good girl. Mar Mabel decides she wants to lay down to eat like the queen that she is. That's Queen Mabel right there. Sit. Good girl, Maylee. Good boy, Mac. All right, it's time for a quick garden update. The last time I showed you the garden, we had just planted everything at the beginning of the spring, and we just got a ton of rain recently, so everything is growing massively. We've already harvested a few things. Let me show you. Welcome to our little garden. Everything is growing massively let me let me give you a tour again if just in case you didn't get the tour the first time so back here in this raised bed we've got a just a whole variety of different bell peppers we've got green bell peppers yellow bell peppers red bell peppers orange girl orange <laughs> orange bell peppers and yellow bell peppers 
Um, and then right here in the middle, I also planted some grape tomatoes. Everything's growing really good. We haven't gotten any uh, any of the pe bell peppers that we could harvest just yet, but I'm starting to see some that are growing. Like we got one right there. And same thing with the grape tomatoes. We're starting to get some, like this little one right here is growing. We got a whole lot of blooms, so that's a good sign. Moving on down, we've got a little uh, tomato plant right here that's got some tomatoes growing on it. This one honestly was kind of a uh, an experiment. I had an extra one to plant. And I wanted to see if it would do well in a pot, so that's what I'm doing. So back here we also have jalapenos. I've actually harvested quite a few jalapenos off of this, this couple of plants right here already. We've got a whole bunch of green beans growing right here. None of the green beans themselves are there yet but again we've got just a bunch of different blossoms oh look we got one little green bean right there awesome awesome my wife is an amazing cook so she she cooks with all this type of stuff that we make amazing home cooking um, again another little experiment i wanted to see can we do green beans out of a little pot so we're trying then in this area right here is just nothing but yellow summer squash uh, let's see if we got one to show you We've been harvesting a bunch of it, uh, but look, there's one right back there is growing. We got a lot of bees here during the day, so a lot of pollination going on. So it's doing really, really well. Moving on over to this side, we've got zucchini growing. Again, um, I kind of harvested everything that was really good uh, just this morning, but it's been, this plant has already produced quite a bit. And then look at this, we've got uh, a cucumber growing and it's kind of growing onto the uh, zucchini plant, but that's fine. But we've got it growing up the trellis here, up the, the fence, and then it's coming out all the way over here, the cucumber. So it's just going crazy. We've got some more zucchini back here. You can see a little one growing, more zucchini, more zucchini here, yellow squash again. You can see some growing in there, doing really well, awesome. Uh, then we got basil, we got some herbs, more tomatoes growing all back in here, just growing massively. Uh, I've only gotten a couple red tomatoes picked so far, but it's still pretty early. Um, but all these are tomatoes. We love tomatoes and just fresh vegetables when we're cooking. We've got all this uh, fresh herbs, we got cilantro, parsley, dill, sage, doing amazing. We got some chives, garlic and onion chives going. Got some uh, strawberries, and again, some more squash right here in the middle. And then right here, this tree was actually a gift from one of our awesome neighbors. It's a kumquat tree. Uh, I don't know, this is honestly my first time growing something like this. Looks like it's starting to bloom, so that's kind of cool. Um, if you know anything about kumquat trees and what we should do with it, let us know down in the comments. I would love to learn about it. Well, that's it for today's video. We sure hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure you give the video a like and comment below. We love to, to just interact with our viewers. And uh, if you haven't already, make sure you give our channel a subscribe, especially if you like this type of content, small farm living and the animals and the goats and the dogs, the Great Pyrenees. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again soon.